Hi, this is Katie with the Marion Campus Writing Center, and today we're going to talk about summary writing. In particular, we're going to talk about the one paragraph summary. So a summary of an article or a story or something that is where your summary is just one paragraph. Um, let us know in the comments if you'd like to see a video about longer summaries. We can see if we can make that happen. All right, so the very first thing that you need to think about when you're writing a summary is you want to pick out the most important details. Your goal is to tell the big picture story of the text, the gist of what it's about, the main ideas of the text. It's not to provide an item by item list of everything in the article. You're not supposed to provide a lot of little details, just the big ideas. You do want to name the author and the title in the first sentence of your paragraph and that makes it clear that you are summarizing somebody else's ideas. You do want to use your own words. You should not be quoting in a one paragraph summary because it's such a short piece of writing. Now, there are a couple of different things that you might need to summarize in your college classes. You might need to summarize stories or fiction. You might need to summarize articles. And the techniques that you will use for this are slightly different. So we'll start with summarizing stories. When you're summarizing stories, you want to give the major plot points and do what we call a five-finger summary, where you answer the journalistic questions, who, what, when, where, why, and how, and also give the main idea. So for who, you would focus on the characters. Who are the characters do in the story doing the actions? Um, for where and when, this is the setting of the story. Where does it take place? When does it take place? Um, what are the important aspects of the setting? So why is the problem or why something happens? And the what is the events of the story? And then the how could be a solution. So if there was a problem in the story, then the how could be the solution or the how could be a process for how the events um, worked themselves out or how the events kind of took place. And then you want to either start or wrap up with the main idea. Um, so like the moral of the story or what the main theme of the story is. Let's take an example. Little Red Riding Hood is a story that most people know. There are different variations of it, um, but generally the main characters, the who, is Red and the Big Bad Wolf. There are other characters, minor characters, but those are the two big ones. What happens? The Big Bad Wolf tricks Red and Red gets eaten by the Big, big Bad Wolf. Where and when does this happen? During an errand to Red's grandmother's house in the forest. Why does it happen? Red shows poor judgment and doesn't listen to her mother. In most versions of the story, her mother tells her to go straight to her grandmother's house and not to dawdle in the woods, and she doesn't listen to her mother at all. She also talks to strangers and gives them information that, um, gives the big bad wolf information that ultimately allows him to pose as her grandmother and eat her. And that is the how. The wolf poses as her grandmother. And the main idea here, or the moral of the story, is of course, don't trust big bad wolves. Or don't talk to strangers, listen to your mother, that kind of thing. All right, so let's look at how a one paragraph summary that answers those questions might read. Little Red Riding Hood, a European fairy tale, is a cautionary story about a little girl who doesn't listen to her mother. She dawdles in the forest when her mother tells her to go straight to her grandmother's house. She talks to strangers, and because of her poor judgment, she gets eaten by a wolf posing as her grandmother. The moral of the story is for little girls to not trust big bad wolves. And so you can see how all of our answers to those journalistic questions come into this one paragraph summary of Little Red Riding Hood. Let's move on to article summaries. Now, it might be kind of daunting to think about writing just one paragraph as a summary to a journal, journal article because journal articles can be very, very long, um, but it is possible. And you can use the PEDAL technique, which stands for point, what is the main point of the article? E for evidence, what type of evidence does the article use to support the main point? 
T, what techniques or research methods did the author use to study their topic? A, how do the authors analyze their data and what are their major conclusions? And then L, how do the major conclusions link back to the main point? If you answer those five questions, then you'll come up with five statements that you can use to write one paragraph about a journal article. So let's take each of these elements in more detail. The point. Where do you find the point, or the main point of, an, of a journal article? Um, typically in a scholarly journal article, you can find the main point or thesis either in the abstract or the introduction. Sometimes it is implied though and not directly stated. Um, and in that case, you have to look for clues and you can usually find important ideas in the title, in the conclusion, in the beginning or ending paragraphs of each section. Um, these are the places where authors tend to place their claims or their conclusions. And if you make a list of all of the claims or all of their conclusions, then you'll be able to um, infer the main point from those claims. All right, where do you find the evidence used in an article? Um, evidence is typically used to support each claim, so if you have found all of the claims, then you should look around where those claims are to find the evidence. Um, in some fields, articles will have a data section that spells out the study's findings, and then those findings typically are used as evidence when they're discussed in um, you know, the discussion section or the conclusion section. What about techniques? Different fields use different techniques to study their subjects. And there's a list here of different techniques. In science and social scientific fields, oftentimes um, you will see experiments being used. In humanities fields, you will see close reading of texts being used. This you're probably familiar with from your high school English class when you had to read a novel and then um, do a close reading of it or interpret it. A lot of fields use interviews where they will do um, the same interview with a lot of different people. Uh, they might also use surveys or questionnaires, right? So like for political research or uh, marketing research, they will send surveys out to people and then analyze those responses. They might also do case studies. Um, and a case study would probably combine a bunch of different methods. So you might do um, an interview and some document analysis and possibly even questionnaires with, you know, one or two or three case studies. And finally, participant observation, where the um, researchers actually observe the participants doing whatever it is that the study is about. Um, there are other techniques. These are the main ones that you will likely see in a lot of journal articles. Um, you can usually find an explanation of the article's methods in a methodology or methods section, and typically in social science fields and science fields, you will see a methods section. Um, in the humanities fields, you are less likely to see a methods section, but the authors um, will probably talk about their methods in the introduction. Moving on to analysis. Different fields also use different methods of analysis. So, you know, in humanities fields, we use textual analysis, we use different theoretical models of analysis. Um, in social, scientific, and scientific fields, they will have their own methods of analysis. They will often use statistical analysis. And typically, authors will explain their analysis methods um, either in their methods section or in the discussion or conclusion sections. Now, in humanities fields, authors will typically explain their analysis methods either in the introduction or throughout the paper. Um, and so sometimes you might have to kind of make some inferences about the the kinds of analysis they're doing, but typically they will set up their theoretical framing in the introduction at the beginning of the paper. And for your summary, you simply need to say what type of analysis the article uses. For instance, you know, the article is using uh, textual analysis, or they're using a feminist theory framework, or they're using statistical analysis, or they're using um, 
Freudian analysis framework, that sort of thing. All right, moving on to link. Articles will typically demonstrate links between their important conclusions and their main point in the discussion and conclusion sections. But again, in the humanities fields, um, a lot of the articles will do this throughout, where they link their major conclusions back to um, the thesis or the main idea in the introduction. And so as you read, you want to highlight sentences that seem to give an important conclusion or a claim, and then go back and think about how those claims link up to the main point. Okay, so that gives you an idea of where you can find each of these different things in a journal article. Um, I want to talk a little bit about how to write about um, somebody else's words somebody else's ideas. You want to use reporting words when you are writing your summaries. Um, let me give you an example. You know, if you're reading an article that argues that apple pie is the um, favorite pie of Americans, and they've done some sort of survey and statistical analysis to show this, in your summary, you would not just say apple pie is the favorite pie of Americans because that makes it sound like it's your claim, you are making this claim. Instead, what you want to do is use these reporting words. Um, so for instance, you would say something like, in the title of the article, the authors use survey methods and statistical analysis to conclude that apple pie is America's favorite pie. And so you can see in that sentence how it's very clear that you are summarizing the results of somebody else's study as opposed to making a claim yourself that you are then going to back up with um, evidence. You also want to make sure you're using transition words to connect your ideas together and make your writing flow well. So let's take an example. Um, in article title, author A, author B, and author C argue that over-sexualized images of women in video games lead to online harassment of women. So in this first sentence, we see the naming of the article, the naming of the authors. Obviously, these are sort of placeholders um, because I'm not necessarily talking about a particular article here. Um, You would, you would put the actual title and the actual author's name in there. But you see those listed so that we know what's being summarized and we see um, a statement of the main point. Um, and then we have statements of the evidence, technique, and analysis in a couple of sentences. To study this phenomenon, they set up an experiment in which participants played a video game with either neutral or sexualized female characters and then were given an opportunity to make harassing statements in an online forum. The authors observed that individuals who had played the game with the sexualized characters were statistically more likely to choose harassing statements than those who had played the game with neutral characters. And so here we see some of that reporting language, right? We see to study this phenomenon. Um, we see a statement of their methods. They set up an experiment. We see a statement of their technique, some participant observation. Um, and we get a sense of the analysis that they did, right? A little bit of statistical analysis. Um, and we get a sense of what the experiment was um, without getting too much into the nitty gritty details, right? Um, we don't know the numbers of participants. We don't know the exact statistics. Um, those are details that you don't need to put in a summary. And then finally, the link here. They conclude that the over-sexualization of women in video games can have a negative effect on the behavior of people who play those games. So there's an example of a brief summary of what would be a very long, um, complex journal article. But it's distilled all of the main points down so that we know exactly what that article is about. All right, some final tips. You want to make sure you read the article several times to be sure you understand it. This is important because the better you understand it, the better you can paraphrase it. So while you're reading, you want to make sure you take notes and then write the summary from your notes to avoid plagiarism and to make sure 
that you are writing things in your own words. You want to focus on the major points, not the minor points. Leave out the minor points and details. Just focus on the major points, the big pictures. And I'm going to say it again because it's very important. Paraphrase the author's ideas in your own words. Don't copy. Don't quote. Focus on the original. Don't include your opinion or reaction. You're just summarizing what the author has said. So you want to objectively report on the article. And then you want to check your summary to make sure that you've used your own words, but not change the meaning. Sometimes when we try to explain things in our own words, things can get a little convoluted and you can end up saying that the article is about something that it's not about. Um, this is why it's important to really understand the article and write from your notes. Think, imagine that you are just explaining to a friend um, what the article was about. You know, don't take, don't copy something out of the article and then try to change words around with a thesaurus. That's not going to work. You want to understand it and then explain it in your own words. So there is a quick tutorial about how to write a one paragraph summary. So I hope this helps and I'll see you in the next video.